First of all, welcome to all of you, thinkers and influencers on cities. We need you. We need your proposal. It is not just a matter of talking about you may a commitment with cities. Lord Norman Foster, I like your foundation. <laughs> but above all, but above all, I trust you. I knew you on the documentary film about you. Impressive. With your foundation in Madrid, you become a Madrid citizen. I am very glad and proud to consider you as Madrileño. <laughs> I do confirm it. Let me please address to you from now on as Norman. Then, thank you, Norman. We are very proud being your host. I agree with you. Madrid is the place to be now in the whole Europe. As a French sociologist recently wrote, Madrid is now where, is, where life is invented. I like so much that you love Madrid. Lady Foster, for sure, you have much to do on the foundation landing of Madrid. I share quite a lot of things with you. We both were pioneers on the successive role we start playing. We both are also married with leading and passionate architects. I know what is it. <laughs> Thank you, you also so much, Elena. <laughs> After my gratitude, <laughs> after my gratitude to Foster couple, let's go back to the forum. I support the concept, the future is now. We are now trying to implement it in real time. A developed city is one where not only the poor have and use cars, but where the rich use public transportation. <laughs> Let us try to get it. And I would add with social housing that the market does not provide. The city has to be a social income in tangible terms, the framework that compensates the increasing inequality. Unfortunately, unfortunately, our developed societies are generating great inequality within the urban agglomerates. For the forum, I will suggest then that you introduce inequality as the tending topic in your debate. For our dear Foster Madrid Foundation, I launch a specific challenge, help us to reduce inequality in Madrid. From now on, it becomes your city. Have a good work. Thank you. Thank you, Manuela, Mayor, for your very moving, warm welcome to the city. I know that so many of you have traveled from afar and um, on behalf of the foundation and everybody who's been working so hard for it, I'd like to say how grateful we are for that. Um, the edges between our family life, the foster family, and my professional life get really quite blurred. And um, as we kind of move around and experience change, we have a, a family motto, and that is that the only constant, the only constant is change. And 
we're witnessing globally a world which is more connected than ever before, not just digitally, uh, but physically. We're also a more mobile society. We're seeing migrations from the rural areas of nations into the urban areas on an unprecedented scale. We're seeing migrations across continents. And so changes, which significant changes, affect us, affect us all. What are the differences, perhaps, between the changes that our ancestors witnessed? I think it's the magnitude of change, the nature of change, and the rate of change. And if we look at the mega scale of the environment, the things that we take for granted, the air that we breathe, to what extent is that going to be affected by the lives of those on the other side of the planet who don't have the capability of pressing a switch and having access uh, to light, to read, to cook, or sanitation, or clean water? And we're talking about a significant part of humanity. We're talking about 1.6 billion, 20% of humanity on the planet. And when they are empowered, then what is the nature of the generation of that energy? Is it clean or is it dirty? And to what extent will that affect our lives? And if we look at the micro scale, we, our landscape, our cities, has been transformed totally by the technology of the car. And we're on the edge of a transportation revolution. The car, as we know it, in your lifetime, is probably going to be extinct, like a dinosaur. To what extent will that affect the cities, the landscape? Will you have the choice of a robotic car, or would you opt for a passenger carrying drone that will hop over the traffic? This was the science fiction of my youth, and we're now on the edge of that reality. So just examples of all the changes that are on the horizon. If all that comes back to our environment. And what is our environment? It's really two elements. It's the buildings, this building that we're in, and it's the infrastructure that connects this with all the other buildings in this city. And what is the infrastructure? It's the square outside, the plaza. It's the green spaces, the boulevards, the metros or highways that go underground, it's the ports, the airports. Together, that constitutes the environment as we know it. That consumes the energy, produces the pollution, it can do it cleanly, it can be in an environmentally friendly way, or it can be in a hostile, consuming way. I think that if I look back over six decades of work, if I think of my student days, I've always been against, I've always been challenging the conventional ways of doing things. And in a way, the foundation has made me aware of that. It's made me aware that in the 60s, I was proposing a green architecture before that had even been coined as a phrase. Um, and that started, interestingly, in the Canary Islands with a project for, for Gomera and buildings that would breathe. And I'm seeing those dreams, those uh, visions now becoming much more reality. So what, over those six decades, 
I think I can say with some certitude that I believe that design is the key to the future. And in terms of the environment, that mixture of the infrastructure and the buildings, it's far too important to be left to any one profession. I believe passionately that the future, holistically, is about all the different disciplines with strong civic leadership, pooling their resources. If that's true, as I know, for an individual building, that you can produce a better building in a non-hierarchical way by everybody, all the different disciplines working together from the outset. I also know the power of small changes to make a huge difference. And I believe passionately that clean technology, the new technologies, that those are, as in the past, interestingly, and that would be a longer story, are the key also to the future. Um, and really, these important messages need to be promoted through research, through an educational program, through projects, to younger generations to anticipate the future. And in essence, that is what the foundation is about. It's a hub that could make those who want to contribute to change for the better technologically, socially, to realize those dreams. It's the potential for something which is non-profit, doesn't have any commercial imperative, to harness the forces of industry, any architects, any engineers, anybody who has something positive to contribute to a society for the future, in change for the better, and particularly those younger generations who believe in change for the good. Thank you.